Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, February 12th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome everyone to this economic news bulletin. This is part two, and um, I'd like to advise new listeners to please visit my website at www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com, sorry. And um, so I posted a new poll up here. I just thought I'd uh, give you a quick peek at it. It says, uh, what country will be the next to go through a regime a regime change similar to Egypt? You have Yemen, Tunisia, Syria, Pakistan, Algeria, Iran, Ivory Coast, or a country that is not listed. Uh, there's a few countries um, like the Congo and um, uh, so possibly uh, some South American countries. Um, and then not sure so you can check that out and uh, all the links will be posted in these videos so you can check them out uh, underneath the videos description and YouTube um, so we got why don't Americans believe in global warming that's what we left off with and uh, we have here China may increase gold reserves beyond Fort Knox level says Hale a China's central bank is being advised to increase its gold holdings nearly tenfold to a level greater than the world's biggest bullion depository, the U.S.'s Fort Knox, which someone uh, uh, who I used to work with worked uh, basically there. He worked there and um, for the Treasury Department briefly, and he said that there are there's no gold in there. So China creates rare earth strategic reserves, and it makes sense, right, because our money isn't backed by anything, gold or anything. So it doesn't make any s sense that they would have gold in there because they don't need it. Um, what they do have in there is a bunch of uh, art, work, and uh, expensive antiques. China creates rare earth strategic reserves. China is building up strategic reserves of rare earth metals in a move that could give it a better control over the resource so it's uh, indispensable to high-tech products. The Wall Street Journal reported storage facilities have been built in recent months in the northern region of Inner Mongolia with the capacity to hold more than 39,000 tons of the metals China exported last year, the paper said, it, but the details of the strategic reserves have not been made public. And we move to this. Massive closures of U.S. coal plants, Loom Chu, uh, Chu says. The U.S. has an aging and inventory of coal-fired power plants, and many units may be closed before the end of the decade, Energy Secretary Stephen Chu said. Quote, we're going to see massive retirements within the next five to eight years uh, today at the Renewable Energy Conference at Washington, that's what he said. And he said President Barack Obama said last month the U.S. should eliminate tax subsidies for fossil fuel production worth four billion a year so it can boost spending on renewable energy and cars that run on alternative fuels such as electric and when you go to this the u.s should require that 80 percent of its electricity comes from clean sur uh, sources such as wind turbines and nuclear reactors clean coal equipment isn't yet available for larger power plants now stick with me here because this is going to get interesting. Regulations targeting mercury pollution and chemicals that cause acid rain and smog would trigger, here we go, for the environmentalism, would trigger the coal plant closures, uh, not new rules from the EPA on carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases uh, linked to climate change. Uh, or Obama's proposed clean energy standards, who said he declined to say how many gigawatts of coal capacity face. Then we have this, coal in Indonesia, two dynasties, several pits, uh, Messrs. Rothschild and Bakri team up to dig coal. Coal is so popular that it makes for odd bedfellows. In November, Nat Rothschild, a member of the prominent European banking dynasty, announced a tie-up with one of the Southeast Asia's most controversial tycoons, uh, Bakri, pictured is the patriarch of a scrum of companies with interests in everything from agricultural to shipping. He is also a powerful po politician who may well run for Indo Indonesia's presidency in 2014. And so these are articles that I found uh, basically in one article that was published by InfoWars. And uh, this is uh, ERCOT warns of more rolling blackouts. This is Dallas-Fort Worth area. And it says the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, the agency that oversees the state power, says the energy grid is nearly maxed out. He said the agency has warned customers that if they don't conserve power uh, this morning, rolling blackouts will likely happen once again. And then we go to this. Greenhouse gas regulations target Ohio coal power. says that the power industry nationwide might have to spend more than $80 billion and retire 45,000 megawatts of coal-fired power plants over several years in adjusting operations to meet current impossible EPA regulations. But wait a minute. Chu just said that they don't do that. And then we're going to go to this. Look at this. For, directly from um, uh, the Reichstag, the White House, the White House blog. You can't believe everything you read. So see, they're going to fix the facts just like Mr. Chu did. Uh, as valuable as the Internet can be in helping to spread information, most people know that you can't believe everything you read. And that's what you'll usually hear that 
bullshit, which is what it is, because it's on the internet, it doesn't. It means that it's not true. Well, no, there's a lot of facts on the internet. Um, there's just a matter of people, whether they're presenting the facts or whether they're skewing them, right? So it says, and they should check the source before relaying every alarming story they read. So, you know, that's pretty, pretty good uh, uh, advice. It says, one such story is going around the internet over the past two days claiming that the Obama administration is somehow responsible for the rolling blackouts in Texas that have caused terrible hardship for so many Texans. The source is questionable and the story is unquestionably false. So here we go. According to the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, these blackouts were actually the result of extreme cold temperatures and high winds, which led to a variety of mechanical failures at more than 50 power plants around the state. Now let's go back to this so we don't think we're losing our minds. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, the agency that oversees the state power, says the energy grid is nearly maxed out. So as these measures are, uh, are finally hitting people into their wallet in that, um, you're going to have more and more PR pieces come out like this that are trying to fix the facts, telling you that, you know, it's not so. Um, all of these uh, climate policies and, and, uh, that are being carried out are not going to affect the coal companies. Well, they are. Climate scientists, it's reasonable to believe global warming is causing uh, snowy uh, winters. And it says here, a prominent climate scientist says it's reasonable to conclude that global warming has caused the unusually snowy weather in Europe. Uh, United States over the past two winters. So there you go. The weather isn't getting weirder. So it says here the latest research belies the idea that storms are getting more extreme. And um, so another uh, facts fixing article by the Wall Street Journal. 35 zoo animals freeze to death in northern Mexico along with all the crops that were destroyed due to the cold. But hey, it's warming. It's due to global warming. Don't ask me how or why it is. Just is. Just shut up. Pay your carbon tax and allow all these policies to go forward. Fewest requests for unemployment aid since 2008. The number of people applying for unemployment benefits plunged last week to, to the lowest level in nearly three years, continuing a downward trend that suggests hiring could pick up. No, it's not going to pick up. It's uh, basically people who can no longer file for benefits anymore have been kicked off. And um, so basically, they don't have any work or they don't have any jobs and they're no longer able to file for unemployment so the unemployment number goes down and so don't believe that number it's around 20 percent so australians australian jobless rate at five percent then uh, it says it was at five percent in january staying at its lowest levels in almost two years so there you go right egypt may need stimulus to create jobs says uh, the finance minister so they're going to do the same thing in the u.s they're going to try to spend uh, millions of dollars of taxpayers money that doesn't even really exist. They're just borrowing it from the central banks on interest, and that's supposedly going to create jobs. CBO director says Obamacare would reduce employment by 800,000 workers, and the Wall Street Journal, I came across it, put out another fix the facts PR piece to say, oh, it doesn't do that. So there you go. 19 scary facts about getting a job in uh in America, and it says here, if you lose your job today, there's a 70% chance you won't find a job in the next month. Uh, if you've been unemployed for a year, there's 91% chance you won't find a job in the next month. Uh, it says here, 2 million people have exhausted 99 weeks of unemployment benefits. Another 4 million will do so in 2011. So I guess that means the unemployment rate's going to go down, guys. Yeah, start cheering. There was zero job growth in the past decade, the worst t in 10 years on record. In the most optimistic scenarios, payrolls won't return to 08 levels until 2013. And that time, population will grow by 5%. More than one in four jobs added to the economy last year were temporary. At 2,000 participation levels, the unemployment rate would be 13%. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with this, and you can check out the link. When you count the unemployed, underemployed, and discouraged workers, only 47% of the workforce is fully employed. Jobless claims data boost labor market outlook. So see, more PR, everything's good, looking good. Higher pay gains seen for 2011. Oh, so we're going to be uh, getting paid more too. Okay. Then it says here, weak demand at root of job crisis. New report suggests so just people not demanding enough. Hmm. That's because they don't have any money. U.S. initial, because they don't have any jobs. <laughs> U.S. initial jobless claims fall to $383,000. And of course, that's inflation too. Um, and we're going to keep moving here. A U.S. unemployment rate to remain high. This is from the Fed chairman. And he, uh, he says here, until we see a sustained period of stronger job creation, we cannot uh, consider the recovery to be truly established. 
uh, Press TV uh, quoted Ben Bernanke as saying, then we have home price drop leaves 27% of U.S. homeowners underwater on loans. And that's right, their uh, value of their homes is uh, less than what they owe, and that's a bad deal. It says mortgage rates jump. And then we have here, Fed backs plan to cut mortgage agencies. The U.S. Treasury Secretary has defended Obama's proposal to phase out the government home lending despite criticism that the poor will be hit the hardest. Uh, quote, we need to wind down Fannie and Freddie and substantially reduce the government's footprint in the housing market. And Fannie and Freddie, it was a, originally, what, they were private companies, then they were public, and then uh, I think they're originally they were public, and then they went back to private, and then they went back to public just recently. UC Berkeley professor uh, Jaffe said that despite some home financing for the poor through the Federal Housing Administration, uh, and, and that, that's basically, that was a failure. Another, uh, uh, another government agency, the move will still negatively impact millions of working class Americans. Quote, it's going to be a different kind of market. It will prim primarily be private lenders, and it's not going to be easy to get a no down payment loan or undocumented income loan. And that's what's going on in China right now. Um, they just passed something where the government will intervene in housing prices and all that as well says era of super low mortgage rates appears to be over say goodbye to the super low mortgage rates average rate above five percent for the first time since april u.s wholesale inventories rise more than forecast then we have surging u.s deficit sparks debate then we have u.s trade deficit rises to 40 billion dollars in december the u.s trade deficit rose to 40 billion dollars in december an increase of about six percent from the previous month as value of imports grew faster than ex exports, the U.S. Commerce Department said on Friday. And then we have this. Um, for time's sake, I'm just going to read a couple, maybe the first five, and then leave you with that. The link will be posted. 21 signs that the economy, uh, or the once great economy, is being gutted, neutered, defanged, declawed, and deindustrialized. And we move down here, and it says, number one, the U.S. traded uh, deficit with the rest of the world rose to uh, $497 billion in 2010. That represents a 32% increase from 2009. The U.S. trade deficit with China rose to an all-time record of $273 billion in 2010. Then number three, the U.S. trade deficit with China in 2010 was 27 times larger than it was back in 1990. And... Um, says here the United States spends more than $4 on goods and services from China for every $1 that China spends on goods and services from the U.S. And lastly, in 1959, manufacturing represented 28% of all U.S. economic output. In 2008, it represents only 11% as it continues to fall. And so you can check that out. China eyes, it faces half a trillion in Fannie and Freddie losses. And uh, you can go in there and check that out. We have this, U.S. plans to wind down Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The Obama administration is exploring plans to wind down state-backed mortgage specialists Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. It says here, Fed's quantitative easing not working effectively, IMF economist says. Quantitative easing monetary policy implemented by the U.S. Federal Reserve, i.e. buying on what Treasury bonds had not brought expected benefits for the U.S. economy. Hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of people... Uh, uh, that uh, pretty much predicted the same result. Fed plans to buy back $97 billion in trade. So they're going to keep doing it, right? The Federal Reserve Bank of New York said Thursday plans to purchase about $97 billion in Treasury debt in the next month, continuing its policy of buying bonds to keep interest rates low and aid the economy's recovery. Derivatives. The real reason Bernanke funnels trillions into Wall Street banks. And uh, you can check this out. It's posted. UK families to lose 27 hundred pounds in cut plans and it says wisconsin may take an axe to state workers benefits and their unions uh international monetary fund director dominique strauss khan calls for new world currency dominique strauss khan managing director of the imf has called for a new world currency that would challenge the dominance of the dollar and protect against future financial instability so it's all your fault u.s imf calls for dollar alternative so again IMF ignored financial crisis warnings. Uh, 2005 it says here, a report says the IMF praised the U.S. economy despite a 2005 warning by its chief economist of a global financial crisis. And lastly here, bus drivers and waitresses, those sorts of people aren't important, claims Tory Peer. So then we have Japan feels ratings agency pinch as debt mounts, Israel to increase property tax, and Israel raises military budget. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.